We are living in a very hard times, and you know, I don't have to explain those. It seems that the whole world is coming into an end. Politicians are changing overnight. Nations are deciding one thing or another overnight. It seems that the stock market, which everybody puts their hope for, for their retirement, it seems to be going down gabooch and down the whole way, and money seems to be disappear in front of our eyes. The future seems to disappear right in front of our eyes. Therefore, we are, seem to live in an area where Jesus said, we are building our hopes and our homes in a sand and not on a solid rock. And this is why we are going, we are having a hard time. This is why the nations are having a hard time. They have taken Jesus out of their vocabulary. They have taken the word of God out of their school. They have taken out of our school. They have taken the word of God out of our finances. They have taken our word of God, the word of God, away from every level in life. So that means that we are building not longer on the solid rock, which is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, but we are building on the sand. And whatever is built on the sand will not survive. It will not stand. It will not be there for your future. So if your future is in the stock market, remember, your future is not safe. If your future is on the politicians, your future is not safe. If your future to be safe, it must be built upon the rock, which is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Only then, and only then, your future is safe. He might be shaking and not understanding it. We might not be able to understand what goes on. We might not be able in which way the Lord is leading our life. But one thing is sure, as long as we are on that solid rock, we cannot be moved. And the future is going to be our future. Therefore, if I want to look into the future, I have to start meditating no longer in what the world is doing, in what the politicians are doing, in what the nations are doing, but I have to start meditating on the Word of God and on, God and on the blessings of God. And so today, as we are sitting here, let us, each and every one of us, look in our life and meditate what we went through and how many times the Lord has been blessing you to bring you up to this date, to this hour. God has been a wonderful God and He has been blessing my life. He has been blessing your life and because of His blessing, He's worthy to be praised and to be glorified is worthy to be uh, looked at, uh, to be looked at. There was a song many years ago that we used to sing, and we was um, <clears throat> every so often these old songs they come into my mind. I don't know why. I don't know. I sometimes I don't even think about them, but they seem to come up. I wake up in the morning with a song, and so these old songs they always seem to be coming up. The song says like this, Jesus, uh, yesterday, today, and forever, Jesus is the same. All may change, but Jesus never. Glories to his name. Yesterday, today, and forever, Jesus is the same. All may change, but Jesus never. Glories to his name. How many know it? Good on you. That means that you are just as old as I am. <clears throat> this is why we are looking at the scripture in Hebrew, chapter 13, verse 8. And the scripture tells us very clearly, without any shadow of the doubt, the explanation is very clear. For Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. That's what Paul said when he was writing to the church of the, to the Hebrew uh, to the Hebrew this is what Paul had experienced 
that Jesus is the non-changing character in which we'll be there even if we're trying to take him out, but he will still be there because his word never change. Nations can take Jesus out of their vocabulary, but Jesus will still be there because he's yesterday, today, and forever. Churches might, churches might change their teaching and changing that Jesus is more some kind of a popular type of thing who is loving everybody and who is going after everybody. But Jesus is the same. He's yesterday. He's today. And he's forever. And he changes not. Jesus said to proclaim this very clearly. He proclaimed it himself. Now let us look for a minute. What was Jesus yesterday? Well, we can go by the word of God. And we can see that John in chapter 11, verse 25, he said, Jesus said what to his disciples, I am, I am what? I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. And he that believeth in me, though he, we were dead, they shall live. He, I am the resurrection of the life. Therefore, my friend, today, don't believe in me. Don't believe in Pastor Neil. Don't believe in whatever come next to whoever is going to be. What we must believe is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ because he's the only one who said, I am the resurrection and the life. And if you want to be resurrected, you have to be close to him. If you want to go to heaven, you have to be close to him because he is the resurrection and the life. And without him, we cannot go anywhere and we cannot do anything. Therefore, he is. He proclaimed it. He proved it. He told people that what, that's what he was. And he proved it, he proved it by, re, by being resurrected by the power of God in the, day, uh, in the day of the cross. But Jesus not only said what he was, he also produced facts in what he actually was teaching the people that he was. In John, he also said, I am the door. By me and in me, you can enter. You shall find and you shall be saved. You shall go out and you shall come in and you will find pasture. I am the door, not the new prime minister. He is not the door. Jesus is the door. And only the nation can be okay when the prime minister, including with all the other ministers who are living in a luxury, in a, in a cocoon somewhere in the city called Canberra, or whatever they might be, only when they bow down before the presence of God and by recognize that Jesus is the only door and the only answer to the nation and to the heart and the, and the heart of people, People, only then the nation will be restored and we can go in and we can come out and we will find restore and food for our life. He is the resurrection and the life. I am the door. Jesus proved he did not just, he wasn't a politician by the way. He said one thing today and then he changed his mind tomorrow. He said he was going to do something now and then he changed his mind. This is the way. He's not just a politician, by the way. This is the way the world is going. I've seen people telling you one thing and then two, a day later they change their mind because it wasn't good for them to do whatever they have said and they change their mind and they do something entirely different. But Jesus proved himself he proved that he was able to be resurrected in john 11 43 that he was at the uh, tomb where lazarus was he went into the tomb he went to see his friend his friend was dead but that didn't, ch didn't change jesus mind 
he was still going into the tomb. He said he was going to see his friend, and he was going to see his friend regardless of where he was. So my friend, you might be dead. Jesus will come and resurrect you. Because Jesus, if you are his friend, he will come to you wherever you are, in whatever place you reside in, in whatever place stage, uh, stage you are, no matter how sick you are, no matter in what place you are residing, if you are a friend of Jesus, Jesus will come. And when he comes, he will shout in a loud voice, Candle, come out! And he will come out. Because Jesus said so. No, I didn't say so. Jesus said so. So Jesus can be pro proved himself that he was able to, that he was the resurrection and he was the life. Not only because he was resurrected himself, but because he also resurrected others. Then, of course, there was another individual who was resurrected by the death by Jesus, but you go and find it in the Word. And if you can't find the Scripture, look at Google. They'll give it to you. <laughs> Jesus proclaimed that he was a resurrection and the life, but he proved it. Jesus also proclaimed that he had power to heal. And people, of course, they said, nobody can heal except the physician. But Jesus said that he had power to heal. And you remember when that woman who was sick for 12 years, she went out to all the doctors that she could think of. She spent all of her money in tablets. And she was still sick until she heard that Jesus was passing by. Come on, get excited. <laughs> Jesus is passing by. And she said, my Lord, Jesus is passing by. I have heard that this man can heal the sick. I have been sick and doctors have not been able to heal me with their medicine and with all of their know-how. Now I have only one thing left. I'm going to see Jesus. But whenever she went to see Jesus, there was such a crowd that she could not get in, was not able to get close to him. And so she had to push her way. She was sick, but she had enough strength to push her way. She pushed her way through the crowd and she came close to Jesus. And he, she just stretched forth her hand and she touched the hem of his garment. And Jesus proved that he is the healer. She was healed in a twinkle of an eye. In a moment, in a moment. Yes. In a moment. Why? Because she has touched Jesus. So no matter how many doctors we go to, unless we go to Jesus, we don't get healing. We get relief, but not healing. Doctors do not give you healing. They give you relief. You have pain, they give you a tablet. You have a headache, they give you a tablet. You have a rheumatism, they give you a tablet. You have... Um, whatever it is, they give you tablet. And so tablet is the answer to everything. My friend, I haven't seen anywhere in any tablet box where she says to me, you take me and you will be here. <laughs> the only way is you take Jesus and you will be healed. No matter how many of the other things you take, it's not going to be. Now, this is Jesus yesterday, my friend. So I'm just looking at Jesus as he was looking. He walking down the earth, down the earth. And he was trying to prove of what he was, and he had proved, uh, uh, and he had proved himself pretty well. The next man that I have here on my notes is Bartimaeus, the blind man. There he was, blind for a long, long time sitting on the, way, uh, on the way, and there people were passing by. Nobody ever really bothered with him. They just gave him five cents and kept going until one day he heard that Jesus was coming by. 
Now Jesus said, I am the healer. I can restore not only, uh, not only sickness in the body, but I can restore the sight as well. So Bartimaeus heard that Jesus was coming by. He began to cry out, Jesus, son of David, come and have mercy upon me. That is found in Mark chapter 10, verse 46. By the way, if you are looking at the Bible, and when Jesus brought him, when they brought him to Jesus, he restored his sight. Are you spiritually blind today? Would you like to see things and you are not able to see? You are searching for the word and searching for things that you would like to know. People today, they are looking to, uh, 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 to, to, um, uh, they're looking to spirituality in order to see their future. They read their, uh, what they call it, horoscopes, in order that they know what tomorrow is going to be. Blind who are leading other blind. My friend, if you want to know what is going to happen tomorrow, I know what is going to happen tomorrow. Because Jesus is going to walk with me. And as long as he walks with me and he talks with me, my friend, I, my eyes are going to be open. And as I walk from one turn around to the other turn around in life, I don't have to stay there in distress and worry because my eyes are open. The spiritual insight, he will come to me and I can hear that voice, hey, come on, don't worry, for I am with you all the way. Jesus had that power and he did it. He was able to do those kind of things. As you can see this morning, I feel the urge of, uh, of, uh, 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 of um, lift up the name of Jesus. I feel the urge of lifting up Jesus. I feel the urge of looking at Jesus the way he really is. He's not just a Sunday morning doer. He's an everyday doer. He's not just something that comes on Tuesday night when we are going to the prayer meeting. He is there day after day, night after night. He's somebody that does things every day. He's with me. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that he, that I am his own. And therefore, I have nothing to I have nothing to lose. I want to raise the name of Jesus. He had power, power upon all things. We are living in a world where where um, uh, there is a lot to this morning by the way we were listening to the news and there was a witch on the on TV. They never put Christians on TV, but they do put witches on TV. So my friend, uh, she was there, she was tell, uh, telling how great it was and how she got all of the things that she got. And I'm telling you, she's as blind as a blind mouse. She doesn't know where she's turning, where she's going, or where she's going, because only, Je uh, only Jesus has the power upon all kind of spiritual thing. And when he says something, it will happen. You remember what happened to that man who nobody could hold? Nobody could hold down because he had a legion of spirits in him. And when Jesus came to his uh, to his town, he came to Jesus. He bowed before the presence of Jesus and I can see that one of these days when Jesus is appearing from the heaven all the witches in her on earth and upon the earth and down in earth they have to bow down to the name of Jesus because the Bible said that what everybody every power must do must but bow down to the name of Jesus and exalt the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I'm not waiting until that day I'm going to exalt him now now, for he's worthy to be exalted. He's worthy to be glorified. He's worthy to be served. He's worthy to be the God in which he really has. Jesus had power over spiritual things. Do you have you noticed on the news that we have more earthquakes now than we ever had? There is a tsunami which is start all the way on the other side of the world in Chile, an earthquake. And the power of that tsunami is felt all the way down to New Zealand. Now, my friend, things are happening so powerfully that there is no control everywhere. Have you noticed that also that in America, the uh, tornadoes are multiplying? 
They used to have one or two a year. Now they have 10, 20 a year. They come by two and three at a time. My friend, there is one thing that I can imagine. There is one thing that the, new, the universe, the, uh, the universe, the earth and the air in which we breathe is rebelling about what God, what the man is doing to this planet. Is rebelling to what the man is doing to this planet and destroying the very thing that God has created and he said that it was wonderful the earth is rebelling when Jesus died on the cross there was an earthquake there was a thundering fall over the place because the earth was rebelling in what God and what man was doing to that man Jesus Christ the son of God instead of recognizing him as a savior of the world they crucified him we crucified him and we saw that he should should have been crucified on the cross. Jesus had power over nature. Remind me one day I was in Fiji and they had cyclones there more than once. And we were staying with a family, actually it was an Indian family. And he said to me when the cyclone came, he said, I went on my balcony, I looked to the, air, the, the area where the cyclone was coming, I raised my hand and I began to glorify the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I command that cyclone to move around and not to touch this place which is dedicated to God. And he said, you know what? He said, the cyclone went around, he did not touch us. You know why? Jesus had power over nature as well. Don't worry about the cyclone. Don't worry about the earthquakes. Don't worry about all of those things. I remember the day when the apostles were worried. They were sitting, they were crossing over to the Sea of Galilee. They were going to the other side. A storm came and the boat was just about to come down uh, to, to be overcome by the waves. And they woke. Jesus, he was sleeping there, and he woke up Jesus, and they said, Jesus, don't you see we are perishing? And he looked up, and he saw the, uh, the, uh, the, the cyclone, and he, claimed, and, and, he, uh, and he cried to the wind, and then he cried to the, uh, uh, to the, uh, to the waves, and there was still, everything went down to normal again. Jesus is the one who has power over nature. And we are coming into the age now, in the time which at the end, and Jesus is coming back very soon, and my friend, we will see earthquakes and cyclones and things like that more and more and more. It is time that we start looking upon Jesus and trust him so that things will be on the right thing. Peter said, you are the Christ the son of the living God. And that's what he was. Paul said to Jesus, he said, you are the high, he is the high priest who is seated at the right hand of God. John in Revelation, he said, Jesus is the alpha and the omega. He's the beginning and he's the end. Isaiah said that Jesus is a man of sorrow. He was despised. He was, a, we esteem him not. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What Jesus said about today, I'm going to close with today. If it's yesterday, it's today, and it's forever. So what Jesus said, he said, greater things, because I'm going to the Father, greater things, you will be doing because I am going to the Father. John 14, 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth in me, the works that I do, shall he do also, because I go to my Father. This is a promise in which Jesus has given to us as individuals, but he has also given to the church as a corporate people of God. He has given us the, this authority to say that if we believe in him, 
if we believe in him, if we believe in him, not if we go to church on Sunday morning, if we believe in him, not if we pray uh, or once a week or twice, once a day, but if we believe in him, if we believe in him, if we trust him the way he is, because he's going to the Father, we have given the power to do the same thing. We can also tell the cyclone to move out because that's the power that Jesus given to the church. We can tell the blind man to, be, uh, to receive the sight because that is the power that Jesus has given to the church. Why is not happening? Because the secret we do not believe. We accept, but we, not, we do not believe. We accept, but we not actually believe with all of our heart and with all of our mind. Miracles are happening today. We have heard the testimony of our sisters, how God is saving people, how God is moving and answering to answer your prayer. My friend, I don't have to go around very much. All I have to do is to look here. And as I look to each and every one of your face, I must realize that Jesus is alive today. Why? Because you are here. And you are here, why? Because you have been filled with the Holy Spirit and you have been saved by the power of God. Jesus is saving today, not just yesterday when he was with his disciples, but he's saving today because he saved you. He's saving today because he saved me. He's saving today because he's saving you and he's saving you. And you are here because you are saved by the power and the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus never changed. He's the same yesterday and he is today and he is forever. And if he can save today, he can heal today he can move powers today and he can move things I remember one time I'll tell you this and then I think we're going to close on this but and uh, and uh, it, it, this is my experience this has happened to me by the way my father has got only one sister one sister and her family and they never even though they had the gospel they have never never accepted the Lord Jesus as their personal savior. One day, my mother had a new uh, uh, a telephone call, and she said, you better come quickly. You have to pray for my auntie. She had some uh, varicose veins in her leg. She had to let it go, and that went into cancrine, and the doctor said, the leg has to be cut. And therefore, she was going to lose the leg. She was a young lady with one little boy. And therefore, it was a very hard thing to do. My mother and some of the other sisters, they got together, they went to the house, and they began to pray. They prayed, I don't know, for how long. That's not my intention. I have no idea how long to pray. If it is half an hour, an hour, or two hours, or three hours, it doesn't make any difference. You pray as long until you receive the answer from God. That's a God wants to test you. Well, then you stay there for just a little bit longer. And so they prayed for a certain time. And all of a sudden, the power of God came on that room. And the presence of the Holy Spirit was there. You could feel it. And the people began to shout to the Lord and scream and praising God and glorifying God. The real Pentecostal way. I like that. And that's a day praised up praising God and glorifying God. The power of God came upon my, my auntie and she felt a strong heat right through her body, going through her body down to her leg. That night, her leg was completely restored by the power of God and the glory of God. My friend, you don't have to be a healer. Jesus is a healer. You don't have to be a mighty man or a mighty woman. Jesus is a mighty man, and he is a mighty of everything. And therefore, if he is there, everything can happen. And that day, she gave her heart to the Lord. Her husband, which was a very hard man to deal with, he began to, when he saw that his wife was completely healed and she was jumping around the house with them moving her legs and everything else, 
he began to cry out for a big old man. He began to cry out to the presence of God. And that night he also gave his heart to the Lord. From that day on, they never missed church once. They were there all the time. They never missed once to preach and to testify of what God had done for their life. Their boy grew up, which is my cousin. He grew up. He went into the call. God called him into the ministry. And he went into the ministry and he began to uh, uh, preach in different areas. He started a church not far from the city of Rome. And we went to see it when we were over there. He started building that church with nothing. Now he that was building a two or, two or three story building with a church that was seating, I don't know, five, six hundred people. And there he was. And if not, not too long ago was dedicated by the, the what desi, dedicated as a temple before the presence of God. My friend, the Holy Spirit is doing great things today. He is moving today. It is up to us to believe that that is what he is going to do. And as we are here on earth and we are doing the work in which God has called us to do, my friend, we do not lose our sight because the Bible said, encourage one another with this word. Jesus is coming back soon. We are not going to lose our sight. We are going to do what we have to do. But we are looking straight ahead. And in front of me, I can only see one thing. I see the sun rising. I see the cloud burst with the glory of God. I see the Son of Man appearing in the sky. I see the dead in Christ that are going to be resurrected. Oh, glory. Glory. I see those who are alive who be translated in the twinkle of an eye. And before you know, my friend, I already live on the eighth floor. I got it already on you. But as soon as that trumpet will sound and as soon as my body is going to be translated, you can see that balcony. You see me going right out and meet the Lord in the air together. And I want to see you there. I want to see you there. I want to see you there. Therefore, my friend, Jesus is the same yesterday, and he's the same today, and he's going to be the same tomorrow, and he's going to be the rock of ages, the rock that I cannot be moved, and as long as I stand upon him, I will not be moved. Oh, 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 oh. He is. We trust him. I was on the elevator the other day. And uh, I know actually it was not this Sunday. It was Sunday before. And there was a lady, the husband. I don't know if they were going away, going visitors. They were going away or what. And my wife said, uh, she said something. And my wife said, oh, I said, we are going to church. Now, the first thing that she said was, not too many people go to church these days, do they? Well, I said, well, depends where you look, because where I go, there's always a lot of people there. Right? So it depends where you look. People have no idea what they are missing. We have a global future. We have a glorious day and a glorious future for the kingdom of God.